Hello, I'm Mark Potok, the director of the Intelligence Project at the Southern Poverty Law Center, and today I'm joined by Casey Sanchez, uh, a writer for the investigative magazine that we publish, The Intelligence Report. Casey and I today are going to discuss a remarkable story that he wrote for the latest issue of The Intelligence Report uh, that raises serious questions about a very well-known Arkansas televangelist. Uh, Casey, who is the televangelist in question, and where's his ministry at? Uh, this is Arnold Murray of Shepherd's Chapel. Uh, technically, Shepherd's Chapel is based out of Gravette, Arkansas. It's a tiny town of 1800 northwest Arkansas. Uh, but chances are, um, you know, you, you've probably heard of, of him or Shepherd's Chapel uh, from TV. He's on over 225 TV stations throughout the U.S. Uh, any given night, uh, usually between midnight and 6 a.m. Uh, you can see Shepherd's Chapel often in three or four hour blocks. So he's huge out there. Uh, one of the things that you write, uh, really the core of your story, you say that Murray attacks a group that he calls the Kenites, K-E-N-I-T-E-S. Who are the Kenites, Casey? Uh, you know, that's not a name you hear in Sunday school. Sure. Well, actually, uh, if you um, had a chance to go to Sunday school, I, I suppose uh, the Kenites are known in, in most traditional uh, Judeo-Christian understanding as uh, a nomadic tra a nomadic clan of Midianites um, in, in, uh, that, that Moses uh, married into. Um, however, in, in Murray's understanding, uh, the Kenites are um, a group of people um, technically descended from an, uh, a sexual union between Eve and Satan. And uh, in, in Murray's understanding, uh, a lot of his followers uh, also tend to believe uh, they're Jewish or of Jewish in ancestry. Uh, this is because Murray says that, you know, the Kenites won the uh, six-day war in, uh, in in Israel. Um, he, you know, he he that that people suggest that uh, he's equating the the Kenites to the Jews, um, but there's so many references throughout his his preaching and his sermons uh, equating the Kenites with Jews. Yeah, I notice in your story, for instance, uh, he says the Kenites are responsible for the death of Christ. Uh, he says the Kenites are the people who claim to be chosen, right? So that really does sound an awful lot like the Jews. A lot like the Jews. The Bears. The Bears. Certainly, and that's how uh, um, a lot of his followers, once they, they're a few years into Shepherd's Chapel, uh, tend to think that way as well. You know, I should try and explain uh, when we say that uh, this, theolo this theology, in fact, sounds a great deal like Christian identity, which uh, is probably the preeminent uh, radical right-wing uh, theology out there in the United States. Uh, you know, for listeners who don't know, very briefly, Christian identity is a theology uh, which has been formed over uh, the course of several decades in the United States, uh, which claims that Jews are actually biologically descended from Satan. Uh, in other words, just like you said, there was a sexual union between Eve uh, and the serpent and, you know, the Jew. The bears. The bears. Quote, unquote, uh, is the descendant of that union. Uh, identity believers basically say that uh, Jews are the preeminent enemy of both God and white people, uh, who are the real Hebrews of the Bible, and that people of color are soulless non-humans who were never in the Garden of Eden at all. Uh, in fact, this is the theology that is uh, probably dominant uh, among uh, our Klan groups in the United States and many neo-Nazi groups as well. Uh, would you say, Casey, that you know Murray's preaching really is essentially, uh, when he talks about the Kenites, he's really talking about the Jews? The Bears. The Bears. Well, Murray uh, will always say no to that answer. Uh, on his, his website, he has a section called An Answer to Our Critics. Uh, again, because there's actually been a number of uh, traditional Christian ministries who've been writing uh, against uh, Murray well back into, uh, into the early 90s who feel that his, his theology is, is deeply anti-Semitic, um, and in, in a few cases they also uh, allege that he's racist. Um, you know, again, if, if you go to the websites of his followers, uh, they're very, very concerned about this group he calls the Kenites. Um, there's a MySpace group which, you know, is worried that the Kenites might be of Asian ancestry, or there's all these comments that they're half Asian. Um, then there's other uh, Murray sites um, which they've interpreted Murray's theology to mean that the Kenites clearly are Jews and uh, they're, they're citing uh, horrible anti-Semitic frauds like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. 
uh, to, uh, to support their views. Um, Murray himself, uh, again, he, he rarely even uses a, a word like Jew. He would say, um, you know, when I refer to the Kenites, I am not talking about Judah. Um, again, this, this sort of uh, older style language he'll, he'll use to talk about it that confuses a, a lot of his, his listeners and his followers, but at the same time sort of seems to be winking and nodding that I'm not going to say Judah or Jews, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll say, I mean, I see that in your story, uh, you quote Murray saying last year that the Talmud, which is, of course, the Jewish holy book, is, quote, the filthiest piece of literature ever written. Uh, and then he talks about how they love it, uh, whoever they might be. So, yeah, it does seem hard to read that and not uh, feel that he's talking about the Jews. The Bears. The Bears. Right, that, that was from a, from a, a sermon sermon he has that he distributes on uh, still on audio cassette tapes. Um, it, it seems in this day and age everything would be MP3 or Internet, but there's, uh, there's something around four or 500 uh, Murray sermons you can order um, directly from, uh, from his office in, in Gravit, Arkansas. Casey, you talked to Michael Barkin, who is really the preeminent scholar uh, of Christian identity, the man who wrote the book that really explained what identity is. Uh, what did uh, Barkin have to say about uh, Murray? Did he think he was really an identity preacher or that he was some, something else? Uh, well, Barkin said he, Murray is, uh, is clearly teaching uh, serpent seed. Uh, again, this belief that uh, there's a distinct group of people uh, that descended from a, a sexual union between Eve and Satan. Um, you know, clearly a, a theology, you know, rejected, um, uh, I think, by, by pretty much every religion uh, except Christian identity. Um, and he, he wasn't uh, quite sure on, on how Murray had stumbled upon the name uh, Kenites. In, um, in traditional Christian identity, they'll refer, uh, again, to a group as the descendants of Cain, and sometimes Cainites. Um, and, you know, Barkin suggested, you know, perhaps it was just simply the uh, similarity of, of the names that, that led Murray to, uh, to, to jump onto this particular word and, and this particular group. Yeah, having written about radical religion for some years, you know, that does seem entirely plausible. I've seen many cases like that. Uh, Casey, you talked to, uh, uh, Arnold Murray refused to talk to you about any of this, uh, but you did talk to some former members of his congregation. I, I wonder, what did they have to say? Uh, well, I, I talked to a, a few members, most of who were really reluctant uh, to go on the record with me in any in any sort of fashion, uh, just because they, you know, they feared uh, you know harassment or, or scandal. Uh, but there was a man named uh, 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 Paul Stringini who um, is is one of the few uh, you know former Shepherd's Chapel students who's become a very uh, vocal vocal critic of, of Murray. Um, he, you know, he was just as devoted to Shepherd's Chapels as anyone could possibly be. I mean, he had bought all the audio cassette tapes, would listen to them on cross-country trips. Um, he went to the, uh, they hold a Passover ceremony in Branson, Missouri every April, although it's, it's different uh, from, from a traditional Jewish Passover, obviously, um, including the fact that it's, it's usually held according to the, the Jewish solar calendar, not the lunar calendar. Um, in any case, uh, Paul Strangini um, actually um, even got married at, uh, at, at Shepherd's Chapel in, in Arkansas. Um, but around in, in the late 90s, uh, he began just to become really repulsed by what he saw as an anti-Semitic tendency in this, um, as, as well as, uh, you know, Murray's preaching about the end times just sort of rang pretty false to him. Uh, you know, Murray has actually predicted the the world was going to end, or that there, there was going to be an antichrist that came back uh, in, in 1981. Um, you know, it's been 27 years since then. Obviously, that failed to happen. And uh, you know, there's there's a number of Shepherd's Chapel students uh, like Stringini who you know get really involved in this again because he's the first person they've found in their life that's actually going through the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And uh, you know, they, that's what they. That's the primary appeal of Shepherd's Chapel. You know, it's a chance to, to really explore the Bible. Um, you know, and it's not until several months, if several years later, that they, they learn all the stuff about the Kenites and, and begin to be questioned. You know, wh what is the point of this? Is this is this about Jewish people? Um, you know, it's it's a, it's a sort of bait and switch going on. Well, I have to say, uh, having read the story 
uh, you know, it's it's pretty hard to conclude otherwise. Uh, in, in any case, uh, you know, it's just it's an astounding story. I, I'd uh, urge people to take a read. Uh, it's on our website at www.intelligencereport.org. Uh, you know, what's probably most surprising about the entire story is how very little attention uh, Murray's theology has really gotten up until now. Uh, maybe that will change, Casey, because of your story. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks to everyone who listened in, uh, and we hope that you found this interesting.